we have been looking at uh, uh, basic iterative methods. In iterative methods, we do not solve A x equal to B directly, rather we solve repeatedly the equation q x k equal to q minus A x k minus 1 plus B and approach the solution asymptotically. This is what we have seen and in one of the basic iterative methods, the Jacobi method, we write the iterative scheme as x k equal to q inverse q minus x k minus 1 plus b, which can also be put in this form, finally in the form of m x k minus 1 plus n. In the gauss seidel method, we write the iterative scheme as x k equal to q inverse of q minus a x k minus 1 plus b equal to uh, in this form, which looks uh, exactly the same except the definition of q. In, uh, in the case of Jacobi method, q is just the diagonal elements of A and in the case of Gaussian method, it is the diagonal elements and the elements which are lower than the diagonal method, uh, than the diagonal, those constitute the q. So, in both these methods, it looks like we have to do inverse of uh, q and then we have to multiply by a q. So, it looks like a, a complicated uh, matrix procedures are there, but uh, it is not really necessary to do it that way. We can, we do not do matrix inversion in actual computations, but solve directly in the following way. Okay. So, let us consider the set of equations given by a 1 1 u 1 plus a 1 2 u 2 uh, up to a 1 n u n equal to c 1 and uh, so on here. This u should have been x. Um, so, similarly the second equation is given by uh, a new set of coefficients a 2 1 u 1 a 2 2 u 2. So, the same variables, but new coefficients. Similarly, for the nth equation new coefficients, but the same variables. So, this is a system of linear algebraic equations. In the Jacobi method, we make use of the first equation and put all these other elements to the right hand side. And so, we can put this as a 1 1 x 1 k plus 1 equal to a 1 2 x 2 k minus a 1 3 x 3 k and so on plus b 1. So, essentially we have this b is the same as the c here. So, we have rewritten the original equation that we have here uh, with the same b as what we have for the given equation and all the other elements except the first element in the first equation is shifted to the right hand side. And uh, so, from this we can get x 1 k plus 1 as a 1 2 divided by a 1 1 times x 2 k minus a 1 3 divided by a 1 1 x 3 k and so on plus b 1 by a 1 1. So, that means all the right hand side is computed and you divide by a 1 1 to get uh, x 1 k plus 1. So, there is no inversion as such in this. Similarly, the second equation here is written in such a way that only this term is kept on the left hand side, all the other terms are taken to the right hand side. So, you have b 2 minus a 2 1 x 1 and minus a 2 3 x 3 uh, minus a 2 n minus 1 x n minus 1 minus a 2 n x n uh, k like this. And if you consider the last equation here, the last equation, uh, the uh, this this term here, this is the n minus x n minus 1 is the diagonal element. So, this, this is kept here and uh, all the other terms are taken to the right hand side along with the right hand side coefficient here. So, in each case by rewriting it like this, we can evaluate x 1 k plus 1 by doing all these multiplications with the previous values of x and then subtracting from b 1 here and dividing the uh, uh, result by a 1 1 to get x 1 similarly for x 2 and similarly for x 1. So, you you solve each of these equations for x 1, x 2, x 3, x n minus 1, x n. So, we start with the initial guess x 2, x 3, x uh, up to x n the 0 indicating the initial guess and solve n equations of equation 2 for x 1, x 2, x 3, x 1, uh, x 4 all the way up to x n for the first uh, uh, step. And now, you have x 1 for all of these and then you again substitute them here 
and then again solve equation 2 for x 1, x 2, x 3, x uh, all the way up to x n for the, at the end of the second uh, iteration step. And once you get x 2, you can again get uh, all of x 3 and so on. So, in each case you are not exactly solving this equation, you are using the first equation to get a new estimate for x 1 knowing the values of all the other uh, uh, variables from the previous iteration. And similarly, the second equation is used to get the value of updated value of x 2 making use of all the previous values of this and then we can go on. So, what we see from here is that it would take n minus 1 multiplications for, for example, you have one multiplication, second multiplication, third multiplication up to n minus 1 multiplications. Okay, uh, this and this. So, uh, there are n minus 1 because this will make it the uh, nth one. Since it is on this side, we have n minus 1 multiplications to give us this whole uh, uh, thing and then uh, n minus 1 uh, additions plus this. So, n additions and the whole uh, result of this uh, n minus 1 multiplications and n additions is divided by a 1 1 to give us x 1 k plus 1. So, that means that you have you need n minus 1 multiplications and 1 division to solve one equation and in each iterative step you have to solve n such equations because you have to get an updated value for x 1 and then x updated value for x 2 and all the way up to x n. So, that means that if you need to go from step k to step k plus 1 you need to solve you need to uh, use a total of n multiplications or division for one equation and you have n such equations. So, that means that there are n square number of multiplications or divisions that are needed to go from step k to step k plus 1. Okay. This is in the general case and n square does not seem to be such a uh, good thing, but if a is pass which is what we have in uh, CFD generated compact grid uh, discretizations and has only 5 non-zero coefficients for a 2D problem or 7 non-zero coefficients in a 3D problem for example, with central differencing. Then what we have is that in each of these equations only there are 7 non-zero coefficients. So, that means that one of these is uh, kept on the side the other 6 are coming out to this. So, that means that you have to multiply only 6 times not n times or n minus 1 times. Okay. So, similarly this is again 6 times. So, each equation is going to have 6 multiplications and 1 division 7. So, that is only 7 n number of multiplications are needed to advance from k to k plus 1. So, in that sense the Jacobi method takes advantage of the sparsity of matrix A. Instead of doing it for all of them it does only for those equations which do not have non-zero coefficients and by doing that it goes from n square number of multiplications or divisions to 7 n or 5 n number of multiplications or divisions to go from step k to step k plus 1. Okay. Now, what does that mean? If you have 10,000 equations, 10,000 grid points, then if you do for every one of these in the general case it would take 10,000 square. So, that is 10 to the power 8 of uh, multiplications to go from k to k plus 1, but if the same set of equations is such that a is coming from the usually discretized uh, uh, CFD type of equation, then we have to do only 70,000 uh, arithmetic operations not 10 to the power 8 which is uh, 100 million. So, that is the kind of advantage that we get when you are dealing with sparse matrix and a sparse matrix advantage is uh, achieved is exploited by the Jacobi method. So, in that sense it makes it uh, 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 much better than in the general case. So, in the general case we are not gaining much of an advantage whereas, in this case we are gaining a significant advantage. Because this n square looks attractive compared to the n cube by 3 for a Gaussian elimination, but we do not get a solution 
in one step of k to k plus 1, we have to do many of those. So, how many of those depend will tell us the total number of computation and we will see that shortly. But the, the way that we actually implement Jacobi method is that is such that we take advantage of the non-zero coefficients and the sparsity of matrix A and we go from step k to step k plus 1 in 7 n or 5 n number of uh, uh, or some constant times n where the constant is of the order of 10 number of multiplications and divisions to go from step k to step k plus 1. And when you look at what is actually required to do these things, it is pretty straightforward. There is nothing difficult at all in going from step k to step k plus 1. It is very simple to program. Okay. Now, what happens in gauss seidel method? For the same set of equations in the gauss seidel method, we have q becoming uh, d minus e and all that kind of thing. Okay. We can now forget all that and we can rewrite it in this simple form which results in the same form as what we have earlier. So, that is the first equation remains the same as in Jacobi method a 1 1 x 1 k plus 1 is b 1 minus a 1 2 x 2 k minus a 1 3 x 3 k and so on up to minus a 1 n minus 1 x n minus 1 k minus a 1 n x n k. The second equation is similar to the previous one except that by the time we have come to solving the second equation, we have already solved the first equation. So, we know the k plus 1 th iterative value, the updated value of x 1. So, we make use of the updated value here and we have not solved the third equation. So, we still have only the old value and then all these things are old values and then you have b, b 2. By the time we come to the n minus 1 th variable x n minus 1 uh, x n minus 1, we have solved for x 1, x 2, x 3 all the way to x n minus 2. For all those things we make use of the updated values and only for the yet to be updated value x n k is put as the old value. So, in that sense the Jacobi method and the gauss seidel method are very similar except in the case of gauss seidel method wherever we have an updated value we substitute that into this and otherwise it is the same approach no matrix inversion and we solve again with uh, uh, an initial guess and then from this we solve for x 1 and then x 2, x 3 and so on. And uh, again if A is passed we do not have to do it for all of these and we have only 5 or 7 n number of uh, uh, non-zero coefficients then it takes only 5 n or 7 n multiplications. So, that means that we are really uh, taking in the advantage of sparsity here. <coughs> and uh, the gauss seidel method will consume exactly the same number of arithmetic operations as the Jacobi method to, uh, to advance from step k to step k plus 1. <coughs> but there is one key difference which sometimes uh, makes the, the Jacobi method better than the gauss seidel method. Okay. One would immediately see the contrast between the two is that we are making use of updated value as soon as it becomes available in the gauss seidel method. So, one would intuitively feel that gauss seidel method should be better than the Jacobi method, okay, which is true in some cases, in many cases where we apply this, but there is one advantage of the Jacobi method as opposed to gauss seidel method, even though it is slower. And the thing is that if you have for example, a million equations and you want to solve these things, then you can solve each equation independently. Whereas, if you are doing it using the gauss seidel method, if you want to solve this equation, you have to wait for this equation to be solved. And similarly, if you want to solve this equation, you have to wait for all these subsequent equations to be solved, so that you can put the updated value. So, that means that if you are making use of large number of parallel computers and then out of the million equations or 100 million equations, you give to this computer the first uh, uh, million equations and for this you get uh, you give the second million equation, third million equation so on. Then this is computer cannot operate 
cannot start the process until this computer has finished all its computations and given it to you. But if it is a Jacobi method, you can subcontract part of the work to this set of computers and you can subcontract another thing and then you can get back the solution from this subcontract computers and then put together and move on to the next one. So, that kind of parallel processing will is more readily implementable in the case of Jacobi method because each equation, each set of equations can be solved independently from the previous known values. Whereas, in this case you cannot solve this equation until all these things are solved and you need to have these things solved and the information should be supplied to you. So, there is uh, uh, the information sub, uh, evaluated by solving the equation and then stored and retrieved, sent back, stored and retrieved all those kind of operations will become uh, uh, necessary in the, uh, in the more of them will be necessary in the case of gauss seidel method. So, that is a disadvantage that is there, but precisely because you are making use of the updated information, you would assume, uh, you would expect the gauss seidel method to work but in some special cases that may be a, a disadvantage. Okay. So, let us come back to this uh, thing here. The number of multiplications or divisions to go from step k to k plus 1 is the same in uh, both Jacobi method and gauss seidel method. The actual number of arithmetic operations depends on how many times we have to solve equation 2 or 3 for the Jacobi method and gauss seidel method to get a converged solution. Okay. So, this is as pointed out earlier, we need 5 n or 7 n number of uh, uh, arithmetic operations, multiplications or divisions to go from step k to k plus 1, that is only one step. How many steps are needed to get a converged solution? Converged solution here we are saying uh, is a solution in which x k plus 1 that is the updated one is almost equal to x k the one that we have updated. If the amount of the updating between the previous and the current one is very little, is very, very small, then you can say it is almost converged solution because any further updating is not making bunch of change. So, if you want to go up to that, how many steps do you have to take to get down, get down to that position? That depends on, that tells us because in each step you are using 7 n number of uh, uh, computations. So, that will tell us the overall amount and how to get that is something that we will have to see by looking at what is this, what is the convergence rate, what are the convergence characteristics. So, here we have a very simple problem, a 3 by 3 problem and x 1 plus 2 x 2 minus 2 x 3 equal to minus 1 and x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equal to 6. 2 x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus x 3 equal to 9 and we would like to solve this equation using Jacobi method and gauss seidel method and we would like to solve this with uh, all the values to be 0 here. So, what I plotted is iteration number and the 3 values, what are the values that we are predicting and how we are updating here. Since we have 3, we can just show graphically like this and the computed value of x i is plotted on the y axis and the iteration number is plotted on the x axis. x 1 is given in the blue color, x 2 is in that reddish color and x 3 is in the green color, each with uh, its own uh, symbol diamond, square and uh, triangle respectively. And you can see that we start with 0 values for all the 3 and at the end of the first iteration, first step, uh, x 1 has decreased to something like minus 1.5, x 2 has increased and x 3 has increased and at the next step x 2 has uh, x 1 has increased from minus value to positive value and the other two have come down and at the next step again x 2 has uh, come down here and uh, x 1 has come down and x 3 and x 2 have uh, come up and after that there is very little change. So, that means that you can see that there is a big change and a big change, smaller change and then very small changes and it seems to have converged because here at least graphically we are not seeing significant change between the previous one and this one. For the same equations, for the same initial guess, 
if we use the gauss seidel method for this particular case we were expecting to get much a faster solution because of updating and we see that we have a problem here because the computed values the solution finally we can see is uh, x2 is 1 x2 is 2 and x1 is 1 and x3 is 3 so x1 plus x2 plus x3 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 again 1 plus 2 x2 that is 4 minus uh, uh, 6 so that is 1 plus 4 minus 6 that is minus 1 so on so the true solution is uh, 1 2 and 3 for x1 x2 x3 that we have got in very small number of steps here for the Jacobi method but we see that with the gauss seidel method at the end of four uh, uh, iterations the values are coming as something like in excess of 200 for x2 and then in excess of minus 200 for x1 and x3 is also not a, a small quantity and at the next time next step here x1 has become minus 600 and x2 has become uh, plus 600 x3 has become uh, minus uh, 50 or something like that so instead of being converging to values of 1 2 3 they are diverging and uh, so in this particular case we see that Jacobi converges quickly and gauss seidel method diverges okay. We can also have other system of equations in which Jacobi method diverges and gauss seidel method converges and some others in which both converge and some others in which both diverge. So any kind of uh, thing is possible. And the difference is the small changes that we are making whether to update or not update is not something that we can say that updating is universally good and we cannot say that okay, this is very easy and uh, then let us go and do it and we can see that there are methods there are problems simple problems in which uh, they do not work. Okay. So it is precisely for this reason we have to do a proper convergence analysis just like in module 3 we took a simple problem and we showed that the wave equation and uh, uh, for the diffusion equation unsteady diffusion equation we have using the simplistic uh, uh, finite difference approximations can give us sometimes to problematic solutions and we see exactly the same kind of thing here and uh, although the iterative methods these basic iterative methods are quite uh, easy to implement and program they will not work in all cases we have to do an a priori convergence analysis to see that the method would actually converge only when it converges we can attempt this. So first thing that needs to be done is under what conditions will this will a given method converge and then if it converges then we are interested in the rate of convergence. Okay. So, this is what we are going to do in the second part of this module 5. So, what we have learnt in the first part are very basic direct methods and iterative methods for the solution of Ax equal to b type of uh, things. We have seen focused specifically on the Gaussian elimination method, the LU decomposition method and the tridiagonal method as direct methods and we made the point that uh, Gaussian elimination is the most efficient method for a general purpose A x equal to B where A does not exhibit any special properties and it is a full matrix or nearly full matrix and uh, LU decomposition is a specialized method which is almost as good as Gaussian elimination but slightly inferior because we have to do two substitution process one forward substitution one backward substitution whereas in the case of uh, Gaussian elimination we have to do only one backward substitution. So there is a small uh, difference there but in cases where we have to solve A x equal to B several times with the same A then if we do the decomposition of A into L times U once then that can be used for all the other equations in which B is changing. So in that sense LU decomposition is a, uh, 
it becomes a better method than Gaussian elimination. It has other things also that we will see uh, later on. The triadagonal method is a special method which works uh, very well, but it has limitations in its applicability. It is much better th in terms of uh, computational uh, arithmetic operations than uh, either Gaussian elimination or uh, LU decomposition, but it will work only for uh, matrices A matrix having only 3 adjacent diagonals including the uh, main diagonal, okay, one main diagonal and the one above and the one below. So, only for this case will it work and even in this case we, we require diagonal dominance. So, in such a case we do not have any problem and division with, uh, with uh, by zeros problem would not arise and uh, we can make use of the tridiagonal method. It cannot be used for 2D problem and it cannot be used for 3D problem without any modifications. Okay. So, when you come to the uh, iterative methods, we have seen today also, uh, in this lecture also we have seen the Jacobi method and uh, the gauss hidden method and we have seen how easy these are to implement and to write programs uh, compared to the uh, uh, direct methods where you have to do uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, eliminations and all that which we have not really gone into. Okay. To write a program for Gaussian elimination will take lot more effort than, than for gauss seidel method or Jacobi method, but for simple 3 by 3 that we have seen in this uh, uh, class here, we can see that uh, the method is not, any method is not converging and uh, uh, we also made the point that this is only a special case and there are methods where Jacobi method would not converge and gauss seidel method will converge and all that. So, we need to do a convergence analysis and based on this we come up with some criteria for the condition of convergence and then we look at once we are assured of convergence we look at the rate of convergence and we look in the second part of this module at some special methods which improve the rate of convergence over what can be obtained by uh, the Jacobi and uh, uh, gauss seidel methods for conditions in which they converge. Okay. So, that will be part of uh, the uh, second module and uh, we will be looking at uh, advanced methods which make use of uh, uh, the iterative approach and we it, they also make use of some special characteristics of uh, the direct methods uh, and we will also finally, look at the multi grid approach which is uh, probably the best uh, general purpose method for sparse matrices that we can uh, coming out of CFD type of uh, problems. Uh, so, that is all there in the second part of uh, module 5. So, as of this lecture we can say that the first module is complete. Okay, thank you.